Think of the last time you went to the store. Any store. The toy store, the grocery store, it doesn't matter. Anywhere you go, your parents buy things with money. Did you go to the local petting zoo? It cost $10 to get in. Did you play on the local baseball or soccer team? It cost money to get the equipment, pay the referee, even reserve the field you played on. Most people work five days a week in exchange for money. Have you ever stopped to wonder where money comes from? Does it grow on trees? Is it printed like paper? Perhaps it magically appears on computers. Let's take a trip back in time to the early 1900s. A handful of families controlled the majority of the world's banking system. But they became worried when new competition began to spring up. Basically, new people were trying to get into the business of banking. Which, of course, is the business of money. In November 1910, representatives from these powerful banking families, including the Rockefellers, Rothschilds, and Morgans, arranged a secret meeting on Jekyll Island in Georgia. They colluded, plotted, schemed, and conspired to use the power of government to monopolize and take complete control of the banking system. They wanted to make sure they would have no competition. The bankers used their money and power to influence members of government, including politicians such as Senators Carter Glass and Nelson Aldridge. Three years later, the Federal Reserve Act was passed. The bankers had achieved their goal and taken complete control of the banking system, control of creating money. The Federal Reserve Act created the Federal Reserve Banking System, also known as the Creature from Jekyll Island. Don't let the name mislead you. The Federal Reserve Bank is not federal and does not have reserves. In short, the bankers who control the Federal Reserve Bank have the ability to print new money. They print it out of thin air like a magic trick. Let me explain. Under the Federal Reserve Banking System, banks can loan out money they don't have. Here is an example. Let's say you go into the bank and deposit or give the bank $1 to save for you. The bank can go to someone else and loan or give them $9. Here's another example. Let's say your parents deposit or give the bank $10 to save for them. The bank can go to someone else and loan or give them $90. The bank only has to have a fraction of the money they loan or give out to other people. They essentially just print more money or create money like magic out of thin air. Why is this a bad thing? Why do banks give or loan people money they don't actually have? Take a look outside. What do you see? Some of you might see farmland, others will see houses and others apartment buildings. On the surface, it might appear that the land and houses are owned by people, your grandparents, your aunt, your uncle, your neighbors. In some cases, they are. But the majority of Americans take money, they borrow money, or take loans from the bank and use that money to buy homes. In exchange, the bank charges interest. But what is interest? Here's an example. Worm wanted to buy a home that cost $10, but he didn't have the money. He went to the bank and requested to borrow the money needed to buy a nice home underground. The bankers were happy to loan Worm the money because they charged him interest. Basically, he agreed to pay back the money he borrowed plus extra money that the bank could charge him every day until the money is paid back in full. So let's say Worm borrowed $10 from the bank. He might have to pay them back $15. Maybe he only borrowed $8, but had to pay them back 
$12. Whatever the numbers, the point is when Worm agreed to take money from the bank, he agreed to pay the bank more money than he borrowed. Here's the kicker. The bank didn't even have to have the money they loaned to Worm. They could make it out of thin air like magic. Even if the bank only had $1, they could still loan Worm $9 and charge him interest. They just print the money. Imagine if you could go to your computer, hit print, and money came out. That's similar to what the banks do. Now imagine you can not only print that money, but give it out to people who agree to pay you back even more money. That's the Federal Reserve Banking System. The entire process is known as Fractional Reserve Banking. If the bankers can just print money out of thin air and make it appear like magic, why is money valuable? Is money valuable? If you go back before all this started, before the Federal Reserve Banking System, before the secret meeting on Jekyll Island, paper money originally represented gold. Let's say a man had $10 worth of gold. He could store his gold at the bank and they would give him $10. The idea was that gold was bulky and heavy and pieces of paper were easy to carry around. He could always go back to the bank, give them $10, and they would give him $10 worth of gold. Of course, this didn't last long. The banks figured out they could get rich by printing money and giving people loans to be paid back at interest. What's the big deal? Let's say one pound of gold was exchangeable for $1, or you could give the bank $1 for one pound of gold. Then the bank prints more money. The amount of gold stays the same, but the amount of money available goes up. This causes inflation, and the same one pound of gold now costs more money. A pound of gold might have been exchangeable for one dollar before new money was printed, but after the money was printed, the same one pound of gold might cost four or five dollars. Every time the bank prints money, they make the money you already have worth less. Sure, the bankers get to charge interest, but your money has been robbed. The creature from Jekyll Island, the Federal Reserve Banking System, allowed the banks to print money at rates never before imaginable. Every time the bank prints money, they get richer, while the money your parents have is worth less. In 1971, America ditched the gold standard, meaning the government, which is filled with politicians paid by the banks, announced that money was no longer to be backed by gold. It was to be fiat currency, backed by nothing. Since 1971, the banks have continued to print money backed by nothing magically out of thin air. The bankers get richer and more powerful, while the value of your money goes down. If you enjoyed this video, you can get a copy of The Bear from Jekyll Island on Amazon.com.